Okay, so this feels a little bit like deja vu from the last video from my last trip to Europe, which was two, three months ago. Uh, but I just had lunch with my wife. She's actually at the elementary school now. She was at the intermediate school around the corner last time, but had lunch with my wife, headed to the airport. A little bit nervous about my flights today because my flight from Pittsburgh to JFK, uh, it's supposed to arrive at the gate at 6.39 p.m. Eastern time. My flight from JFK to Amsterdam starts boarding at 6.35, four minutes before I arrive at the gate. So if there's any delays at all in my flight from Pittsburgh to JFK, gonna have a problem. Thankfully, uh, the gates are really close to each other. So once I get off one flight, I can get right to the other. I don't have any checked bags this time. So we'll see what happens. Here we are again. Uh, boy, it does not seem like all that long ago, the end of January, that I was here at the Pittsburgh airport doing this very thing, sitting in my car, talking about a flight to Europe, only this time I've been there once and now I'm going back and I'm so excited. So just like before, I wanna share my thoughts before I get uh, on this adventure that's gonna take most of the night. In fact, it is uh, almost 2 p.m. Eastern time here in Pennsylvania. And uh, it'll be, let's see, uh, another 28 hours or so before I get to my hotel. Uh, so a long day ahead. Hopefully, like last time, I get a couple of good hours of sleep on the plane. Uh, it's going to be a tight connection, as I mentioned, in New York. Hopefully, there are no delays. As long as there's no delays, get in and into New York, we should be fine. So what are my thoughts this time around? Well, um, part of it's a little different, obviously, because now having been to Europe once, I, I feel I don't have quite the level of excitement, of excitement um, making that first trip. But this one's exciting as well because four more countries uh, on the docket uh, in the next 48 hours. I'm going to be in the Netherlands, Germany, Belgium, and Luxembourg. So super excited to experience those places. Uh, as far as the content that I'm making for the channel goes, it's going to be a little different this time, number one, because I'm going to have a lot more human interaction on this trip. I'm uh, going to be on a tour all day Saturday with a bunch of other people and with the guys from Band of Brothers. I'm um, going to be spending parts of three days with our friend Sander VK History um, as uh, Friday and then on Sunday, going to be making videos for the channel with him. Uh, and then he'll be on the tour on Saturday as well. So a lot more human interaction this time around. Won't just be kind of me doing my own thing and really only interacting when I'm getting food or checking into a hotel. Uh, so that'll be different. The other thing that's different for this one for me is um, I, I feel a lot more pressure about the content I'm creating. I feel a lot more pressure to get it right because these are stories people are much more familiar with. Last trip, I was making stuff about World War I, and while some of us know some about World War I, most people don't. Most of the people I was making these videos for were, were learning about these events for the first time, or at least learning these stories for the first time. This time around, I am walking in the footsteps of giants. I mean, I am going to places that people are much more familiar with than I'll ever be. Uh, there are still people alive who experienced these events, though we're losing more and more of them all the time. Uh, I know that, oh boy, somebody's alarm is going off here in the parking lot. I know that there are some people who, maybe I'll do this when I walk to the airport. Let's continue this conversation. I went to get out of the car and it stopped and then as soon as I started talking again it started again and now it stopped again so we'll see what happens here um you know especially because a lot of the videos I'm going to be making are places where the men of easy company were 
you know, Bastogne, uh, the foxholes outside of Foix in Belgium, um, Market Garden. People know these stories and love these stories. Uh, so I, I feel a lot of pressure to get the history right, to know what I'm talking about. And I guess in that sense, I feel a little more unprepared um, because I, I wish I had had more time to research and do this right, but I'm going to make sure I get this as right as I can. Um, so I guess there's a little pressure in that, but there's also excitement because I know that like many of you, um, I've got a deep love for the men who were in that unit and for what they did. And I recognize that there's not necessarily anything more extraordinary about them than could be said about thousands of other men who fought on the different fronts in the various armies. But theirs are the stories that we know. And so these are people whose stories we've fallen in love with. These are people we look up to, people we admire. Uh, so I feel a lot of pressure to get that right and to do them justice. So I hope I do that on this trip. Hoping to make much more use of the drone this time around. I'm certainly going to have better weather, looking about 60 degrees and dry pretty much every day that I'm there. So I'm excited for that. Uh, and I've tried to pace myself a little more. I've tried not to plan quite so much so I can spend more time at the places that I go to so I can do those things the right way. So we'll see what happens. Join me on the journey. All right, so a uh, little background on the Pittsburgh airport. Uh, there's four different zones where you can park. They go anywhere from $7 a day up to, I think, like $24 a day. Um, when I travel for Rachel's Challenge, uh, when I have an expense account that pays for the parking, uh, I, I get a certain amount per day for parking and food. I usually park in the $16 a day lot, which is a little bit closer to walk. It's maybe a five minute walk to the terminal. Um, when I travel, especially long trips where it's me paying for it completely myself, I park in the $7 a day area, which is the furthest away, doesn't have a shuttle, and it's a good 10, 15 minute walk to the terminal, but I figure it's good exercise. Now that bit me a little bit coming home from France because the weather was awful. There was a foot of snow on the ground and there was about a half inch of ice on my car and it took me a half hour just to get into my car. Uh, today it's a little nicer, it's like 50 degrees. It was 80 here yesterday, so it's a little colder now, but not too bad of a walk. Have I mentioned the best part? This is my first time in an airport in 25 months and I'm not wearing a mask. Oh my gosh, when, when that news broke, my flights to and from Europe got so much better. Okay, well, that was the quickest I've ever gotten through security. It was like there was no line, I was next up, and they have this new machine where you don't even have to scan uh, all your electronics separately. You usually have to pull everything out, so like the laptop goes in a bin, and my tablet goes in a bin, and my drone goes in a bin but everything got to stay right where it was. So I flew through security in like two minutes. Now I'm at my gate and there's literally no one here because there's two hours until I board. So I've got a little time to sit down and work on some more of my research for the trip. So I got this new backpack for this trip that holds a lot more than my old one did. Um, I, I chose to go with just a carry on luggage for a week in Europe. I know that doesn't seem like much, but all I have in here are my clothes, my getting ready in the morning bag, uh, and an extra pair of shoes. Everything else I brought with me is in this bag, and boy did I fit a lot in here. It weighs probably twice as much as my suitcase does. Uh, so in my first zipper I've got, uh, well here, let's, let's show you. So in my first container here I've got my laptop, um, a binder with a book, and several notebooks. Um, just with all my research and everything. I have everything digital form as well, but I wanted printed copies just in case. Um, I think I've also got a t-shirt in there that I'm gonna wear tomorrow. I've got my PJ pants here. Um, here's my gimbal. Um, uh, my drone's in there. Uh, and then a bunch of cords and stuff are in that part. Uh, and then here I've got some snacks. Uh, 
my wireless mics, uh, another stand that I use sometimes, a bunch of cords, power cords, um, some other miscellaneous things. Uh, my passport and my wallet are in there. And then most of my chargers and then my portable Wi-Fi that I'll be using um, to connect to networks in Europe there, plus a bunch of other cords. So yeah, that's a lot of stuff. arrived at the gate in New York 10 minutes early, which means my flight should be boarding right about the time that I get to the gate. Almost there, only about a five minute walk. Doing good, it's a good start to the trip. Ladies and gentlemen, we're ready to begin our pre-boarding process. At this time, we invite all customers required additional time. Started boarding literally the second I walked up to the gate. I mean, the timing could not have been better. So let's take a look at the boarding process here. There's the plane right there.
a little update. I'm here in Amsterdam. The flight was amazing. It could not have gone better. Everything about the flight was fantastic. It was smooth. I got a glimpse of Dublin, Ireland as we were flying over, which was cool. Um, then I got to Amsterdam and found out that my bag, remember the bag that I said I wasn't gonna check because I wanted to keep it with me, which is why I packed a small bag. Well, they made me gate check it in Pittsburgh because it was a small plane. Uh, and because I was worried that it wouldn't get off in time for me to get the bag and, trans and, and go myself over to my other flight, I gate checked it all the way through the Amsterdam. Big mistake. It didn't make it onto my flight. I found that out when I got here. The notification said, and the people here at the desk said that it's on a flight an hour and a half later that's arriving, a KLM flight that's arriving at 1030, which means my whole day's set back by an hour and a half. Now we're just crossing my fingers that my bag is actually on my flight, on that later flight. That flight just landed. I'm sitting at the baggage claim waiting. All right, well, better late than never. I got my bag, it came. It was one of the first ones off that plane. And now we gotta find the rental car and head to our first stop. I've got, I think, six stops today in four hours of driving. been driving around the Netherlands for a few hours now it's uh, way later than I expected it to be at this point it's 316 but we are about to head into Germany let's do it so this is kind of cool I am in the Netherlands on this road but as soon as you get off the road just to my right on the other side of that ditch that's Germany so Netherlands Germany Netherlands Germany Here we go, we're crossing the border. Officially in Germany. Welcome to Germany for the first time, Deutschland. All right, so here's my room at Maison Village here in Norbik. And uh, it's all kind of self check in. They send you a code in the email. You use the code to unlock the little box outside to get your key. It's kind of like in a little little apartment complex, really, more than anything, but it's really nice. I'm parked right out there, the silver car. And then there's a little uh, self-serve kind of honor system snack thing going on here. That's cool. I don't know what's in here. Oh, tea. It's cookies, a little lounge area to hang out. Okay, so now that we have rolled into the hotel, I gotta tell you about what happened. So I uh, was in Germany. I was driving from Cranenburg, which is just across the border from the Netherlands, uh, down through past Dusseldorf and down to uh, an area outside of Aachen where I was going to make a video. And I think I was somewhere in the area around Dusseldorf when this station wagon behind me, uh, it's like a just a regular looking car. It definitely didn't look like a police car. It had two little lights flashing and it zipped up past me and then I didn't see lights anymore, so I didn't think anything of it. A few minutes later, I saw that same car drop in behind me, and for probably about 10 minutes, it just followed me. Uh, then they zipped up and got in front of me and flipped their lights on. And in the back, there's a light that says poli uh, police in German. Uh, but I'm thinking, okay, they're pulling over the person in front of them because that's what happens in the United States. The police get behind you, they turn on the lights, they pull you over. I'm seeing this station wagon looking thing that has like a neon sign in the back that says police. And I'm thinking they're pulling over the guy in front of me. Well, after a couple of minutes, they start like waving their arms and pointing at me. And then like they start waving a sign that looks like a, a ping pong paddle and it, like it's red. And, and it's quite obvious they're trying to get my attention. So I follow them 
onto the exit and they they pull over and I pull in behind them and they these two guys get out of the car. One of them's they're both in plain clothes, but one of them's got like a a jacket on that says police on it. And so they come over to uh, my window and I put down my window and uh, they asked me if I spoke English. I said I did and they said, "What's the problem?" And I said, "I don't know. Why did you pull me over?" And they said, "Well, why why didn't you pull over when we told you to?" I said, "I didn't know you were telling me to." I said, it, "You know, in the United States, they pull us over from behind. I had no idea you were pulling me over until you started waving your arms." And so then they they asked me what I was doing in Germany. They asked me to see my license. They're asking me all these questions: Where'd you come from? Um, where are you going? Where'd you get the rental car? Then they make me get out of the car, which I've never had happen in all my life. I've never had a police officer tell me to get out of the car. I've never had a police officer pull me over without telling me why they pulled me over. They never did tell me why they pulled me over. Um, then they made me get out of the car and pop the trunk. And they didn't touch anything. That They like lifted the thing to see like the space underneath. And they said, that's your luggage? And I said, yeah. And they said, okay, handed me my driver's license and said, you can just make a U-turn here and get back on. And that was it. I have no idea why in the world I got pulled over. I don't know if it's because I had Netherlands license plate or what, um, but I'm clueless. That was, it was really, really weird, but there you go. All right, let's add another country. Welcome to Belgium. On our way to Bastogne. Man, it's like the second you cross the border into Belgium, boom, you're in the Ardennes forest. It's just like instant. Pretty cool though. Beautiful country. The roads are nice and wide, much wider than the roads in uh, the Netherlands, that's for sure. Uh, very hilly here. I like it a lot. Looks like we're gonna get some clearings up here. That's the Bois Jacques in front of us there. I'm driving up from Foy, Foix. All right, so once again, I'm uh, driving alongside another country. I'm back in the Netherlands, but right there on the side of the road, that's Belgium. So Netherlands, Belgium, Netherlands, Belgium. So it's about 6.30 on Thursday. I just got back. Um, I left about 8.30 this morning to head down to Henri Chapelle, to Foix and Bastogne. And my plan was to go to Luxembourg as well. I had the whole thing planned out, all the graves I was gonna visit. Just didn't make it that far. Um, 6.30 now and uh, by the time I would have gotten to Luxembourg, I would have had less than an hour in the cemetery and it just wouldn't have been long enough. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm actually just going to take a little walk around um, the little town, Norbeek, that I'm in and show you around a little bit. to look it up. I wonder if this was their headquarters.
and this is where I'm staying, and that's actually a window in my room right there on the second floor. Hey guys, what's up? Sander and I are here walking through uh, Eindhoven, and yes, yeah, we just uh, just had our evening with the guys from Band of Brothers, and we're on the tour with them tomorrow. They've been awesome, and we're just enjoying a little of the nightlife on a Friday night here in Eindhoven. We went to the uh, the cafe, the the high end cafe, McDonald's, to have <laughs> some burgers. It, it was what was open. Oh, yeah. so. Happy Saturday morning. We had a pretty full day yesterday. Sandra and I went to the, uh, after I went to Margaretten Cemetery in the morning on Friday, met up with Sandra and we went to the Overland uh, War Museum, which was fantastic. Can't wait to bring all of that to everybody on the channel. And then last night we had the big event, uh, Q and A time, just hanging out with the guys from Band of Brothers, which was awesome. And now, I'm uh, walking through a very quiet Eindhoven this morning because I'm headed over to where we're meeting to get on our bus for our tour today. So, show you around the town a little bit this morning. It's pretty quiet. Well, we finished up our tour, and now we're heading back to Lab One for drinks. There's the whole crew behind us. There's Sander. Hello. Hey, hello, hello. <laughs> now you're all gonna be in the video. Is my makeup well on? Do I look good? No worse than mine. <laughs> all right, the day is over. It's eight o'clock p.m. Twelve hours after I walked out the door, we're finally finished uh, with the day spent with uh, not only with the uh, cast members from Band of Brothers, but also with uh, 50 other amazing people. And uh, wow, it was just a whirlwind and it was, it was beautiful. There were so many things that I want to share about it. But uh, one thing really sticks out in particular, um, Mark Lawrence was with us, who played Dukeman in Band of Brothers. And uh, of course, if you're familiar with the story, William Dukeman was killed at the Crossroads battle here in the Netherlands. And um, Mark, we, we got to the Crossroads where that battle was, and, and we knew this was going to be an emotional experience for him because you can imagine these, these guys, as, as much as we who watch Band of Brothers and who love the story connect with these characters, imagine how much these people who portrayed them have connected with these men and gotten to know the people. You know, he didn't get to ever know Dukeman because Dukeman died in 1944, but uh, in a sense he did, you know? I mean, he there's a, there's a kinship there. There's a brotherhood there that can't really be explained, I guess, is the way to put it. And um, so we knew it would be a special time for him, but as we were walking, we're probably 50 feet away from the exact spot where Dukeman was killed. And, and I, I happened to be standing next to him and I asked him, I said, have you been here before? And he said, no. And all of a sudden I realized that I'm standing next to this guy who Dukeman's been a part of his life for 20 years. And I'm getting to witness this really kind of a sacred moment where he's going to go and stand in the spot where this man took his last breath. And I, I pulled out my, my phone and I recorded it, him walking up to it. And, uh, it was obviously very emotional for him, but you know, he just one of the things he said was he said, "This is where he has had his last glimpse of this earth," and it was pretty profound, and it brought us back to the reality that this was war, and that these were men who 
weren't just characters in a TV show. These were real human beings who really died um, and who were really mourned and missed by family and by their comrades. And uh, it brought back that reality to it. So it was a pretty amazing day, uh, pretty profound, good stuff. past the home of PSV Eindhoven, one of the big teams here. Well, as Kate was doing her best to care for the wounded and dying in this home behind us, the war continued to rage all around Osterbeek. That's a, a story. Uh, see, I mess up some. Ja, hij had zich bedankt, hè? Misschien uh, tot in de toekomst. <laughs> As Kate did her best to care for and comfort the wounded and dying in this home, the battle for Osterbeek continued. As the British were slowly sque squeezed. <laughs> As Kate did her best to care and comfort. <laughs> Blue, that'll go on the blooper reel. <laughs> the blooper. All right. <laughs> As Kate did her best. <laughs> and it's almost 400k. You know, yeah, that'd be over $400,000. Yeah. And yeah. like five or six, maybe seven years ago, it was like 150 for this. So you understand? Is that because that? they're not allowing new building? Yeah. So you now understand why I can't get oh a house? Oh, goodness. Here, one yeah, point. That one. All right, well, it's my last night in the Netherlands. I am at my hotel, which is actually right across from the airport. You can actually see the airport right out there. I guess you probably can't. Well, I guess you can kind of see it, even with the brightness difference. Uh, I'm looking right at the planes coming in. Um, but it's a, actually a beautiful view. There's a little pond outside, and they've got lights. And it's the Hotel Ibis, and it's a really cool hotel. It's huge. Uh, it's almost like a mini mall downstairs with all the stuff going on. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, I ordered a pizza in my room because I didn't. I was tired after a long day. didn't feel like going out. And I'm going to be doing a live stream here in a little bit. So what I got with it were these mini pancakes for dessert. So we're going to give those a try. Let's see what those are like. Mm. They're different. They're good. I like them. Kind of oily, powdered sugar on them, good. Um, so one thing I'll say is, uh, and this is all throughout Europe and probably one of the reasons why Americans are so much fatter than Europeans are on average. There's less sugar in everything here. Even stuff that you would get in the States, like Sprite, for example, there's less sugar in it, Coke, Pepsi, all that stuff. And you get smaller portions. The cans that you get are smaller. When you go to a restaurant, they give you a little bottle of it. And it's like like what you would get like a liquor thing on, an, on, a, on a plane. That's like how much pop they give you. Um, so those kinds of things are different. Uh, the menus tend to be healthier. They tend to eat <clears throat> wheat bread a lot more than white bread in a lot of cases. Things like that. Um, just some random observations. A positive test result looks like I'm going to be okay. It is very likely you have COVID-19, and it is important to be under the care Guess of your I'm go home. provider. The telehealth proctor is not. And just like that, we're headed for home. Really easy boarding process. Um, all the way through, security was quick. Um, going through customs and passport check and all that stuff was quick. And uh, now we're boarding our flight for New York, where it'll be a zoo, I'm sure. Well, it's been a long day. I'm finally at JFK. 
huge line as usual at immigration. If I hadn't had the app, the global entry app, so I could bypass all of that, and if I wasn't flying first class, which meant I could bypass three-fourths of the security line, I never would have made it, because I'm still gonna make it to my gate maybe five minutes before they start boarding. Two-hour layover is impossible unless you have those ways of getting around things at JFK. Just enough time to eat real quick before I board my next flight. Okay, so it's uh, five o'clock Pittsburgh time, which means it's 11 o'clock p.m. back in Amsterdam. Uh, that puts it at 15 and a half hours since I got to the airport in Amsterdam. And I've still got an hour and five minute drive to get where I'm going. Uh, so that'll make for about a 16, almost 17 hour day. Uh, but that's okay, all worth it. Uh, my closing thoughts, my, my only closing thought is gratitude. Uh, I'm grateful. Grateful that I had this opportunity. Grateful to have met some amazing people. Uh, spent time with amazing people on the tour. My couple of days I had with Sonder. Uh, the guys from Band of Brothers were all phenomenal. Um, grateful that I ha got to visit uh, places like the Crossroads where these incredible men saved the world in 1944. Um, and not just them, but the, the millions like them from every nation who fought uh, against tyranny. Grateful that uh, my wife, just a week before graduating from college with her master's, in the midst of getting final papers done and still having to deal with taking kids to soccer and school and all those things, um, supported me in doing this trip at a really hectic time. My mother-in-law for helping out. Um, just grateful. Grateful to our community uh, who supports this channel and allows me the opportunity to do things like this. Hopefully I can give just a little bit of that back with the videos that I made um, and take you along for that journey. So i um, going to eat my Chick-fil-A. I got some to go so I can get home and going to make this last hour and five minutes of the trip to get home. Thank you guys.